Good morning guys and welcome to Vegan Vlogmas episode 5. <laughs> to see um, when we first arrived at this beautiful 1800s converted church, you can check out Vegan Vlogmas episode 4. Today I'm going to be walking you through a few of my favorite things. Um, I got a few shipments of uh, luxury sustainable vegan fashion so there should be a coat and a pair of shoes in there and then I'm going to be cooking some of my absolutely favorite savory comforting vegan food um, and I'm going to be doing that cooking in this beautiful professional chef's kitchen which we have annihilated as you can see here. <laughs> Okay, so I have you guys precariously perched on an assortment of game boxes. And I'm going to run through this unboxing real quick with you. Let's see, what do I have here? I have a shipment from, I think this is from Altruist. Oh no, this is from Noise. Oh, okay, so this is a coat. Which is awesome because we are out um, up north. This is from Noise. So Noise makes exclusively vegan like winter apparel. I would not say they are the most sustainable brand out there. Um, but I did want to um, mention them to you guys because they are generally far more affordable than most sustainable companies um, because they manufacture overseas. But there are aspects of their design and manufacturing that are sustainable. For example, a lot of their coats are filled with like a recycle fiber, like alternative to down. So most of their coats are, will help be like um, stuffed with recycled uh, materials. I think usually made for plastic water bottles. So I ordered myself a little funky coat from them and a scarf. I think the scarf says something like, be a nice human. <laughs> and you know what else I like about noise is they're very fashion forward. So if you like the style of, um, you know, like a lot of the other like big Canadian coat companies like Canada, Canada Goose, uh, Red Sack, Nobis, um, there are a lot of like really fashionable coats made by Canadian fashion companies, but they all use like, you know, feather and fur trim and stuff like that. So if you like that sort of style, I would highly recommend you check out Noise. They have a lot of beautiful, like tailored, funky, fashion forward coats. So I just grabbed this little scarf because I think it was on sale for $15. And it just says, be a nice human, which I think is super cute. And I don't have that many scarves, so. And then, okay, it looks like the uh, coat is inside this pouch with handles, which is interesting. Oh my God. So it's a leopard print um, snow coat. Now, I don't really have too many like funky, like kind of trendy looking coats. Not this is trendy, you know, leopard print is kind of like a neutral in some cases. This does have that recycled plastic water bottle uh, filling inside. So I'm going to try this on in a moment. I just want to check out some of the details. It looks like the hood is detachable and it also has a drawstring on it. The zippers go both ways, which is great. Um, if you live in the north, you know, it's a little frustrating to say like, try to sit down, whether you're going to drive or you're, you know, taking public transit and you need to sit. Sometimes it's nice to be able to unzip from the bottom just so your legs have more room. Let's see here. I ordered a size extra small. So we'll see how that fits me. And we can move on to the, this is my Eco Elf shipment. I know I just bought some <laughs> shoes from Eco Elf, but I had actually ordered these originally and um, I wasn't sure if the package was gonna make it. So this one eventually came in, but now I have two pairs of winter shoes from Eco Elf, which is pretty cool. Um, let me slide this open. In case you didn't catch my video where I unboxed um, some other sustainable vegan winter clothing, Eco Elf is a certified B corporation. They use a lot of recycled material and they assure ethical manufacturing um, with everything that is made by the brand. So I'm really excited for these because these are supposed to be like a padded, like, you know how Chanel does their like quilted pattern on their bags and they're known for that? These are like a black winter sneaker style shoe. 
with quilt paint on them. Oh my god, these are really cool. Oh, oh my god. I, oh my god. These, I have chills. <laughs> these look so awesome in person. Holy crap. These will be the perfect winter shoe. I'm sorry guys, I should have turned on one of the lights here. Let me turn an overhead light on and see if I can uh, get some better lighting in here. One second. I don't, I don't know if that helped though. Maybe a little bit. Check out the detail on these snow boots. I don't know if they're snow boots or snow shoes, um, but they have this beautiful quilted pattern to it. There's a kind of decorative strap that runs all around the perimeter of the shoe. It says, because there's no planet B, it seems like it's slightly reflective, which is good um, when you're walking when it's dark outside. The laces here are elasticated and it has just a really thick cushion to it. Yeah, these look awesome. I'm definitely gonna try these on and take them for a spin probably today. Oh, I can put both of these together. These actually look really nice together. So let me see here, size wise, I think I ordered seven and a half, size 38. Um, so that's roughly um, a seven and a half. I will say with my other Eco Elf shoes that I just ordered, the navy ones that are like the knit material, um, the seven and a half is definitely a good fit. I could have even maybe gone down to a seven just because my feet are kind of short um, and wide. <laughs> so usually with lace-ups, I do a, a seven. Um, for some reason, I decided to go with a seven and a half just so I have room for like thick socks. Oh my gosh. This is perfect for Canadian winter. Okay. These look so stylish on. Oh my God. I'm actually really impressed with these boots. And these were an investment. Um, the noise items are, I think, more like budget friendly, if you will. Uh, Eco Elf tends to be a little bit more on the expensive side because they're ethically manufactured. So, you know, you're paying the actual like true manufacturing costs with them. Oh yeah. Dude, these are awesome. Amber, come see these boots when you get a second. Ooh. Come see these boots. <gasps> they like look like Chanel, but like funkier. Like if Chanel meant Balenciaga. Oh, those are beautiful. Yeah. And they're made from recycled material. What do you think? I love them. They're sick. Can you wear them today? Yeah, I'm gonna wear them today. Yes, please, thank you. Look at this coat. I don't know, I, I don't know if I... Where are these from? This is from Noise. Um, they make like vegan outer. Yeah, <laughs> you have to wear both of these things today. I feel like I think I might. They too. actually match. Like they could go together. See? Yes. And like that's an outfit. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cool, right? Yes. These are beautiful. Yeah. Dude, I think you can wear this. I'm yeah. like kind of jealous. So you know what? Just don't wear them around. I'm sure it's like <laughs> push you out of them and just jump into them. Oh my gosh. Yes. And they're like, well, now we can go tubing and yeah. do all the things. You're set. Oh my god, I'm so happy with you. This is my first pair of like winter boots beside those radios. Yes. Really? Yeah, I don't have any winter boots. How do they feel? They feel super comfy and squishy. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're so cute. And, like no snow can go in the other. And they're so okay, so they are what? They're e They're eco. Um like the brand is called Eco Mm-hmm. Okay. But they're made with uh, recycled plastic water bottles. What? Really? Okay, I actually still see it. Science! Like, I was going to say, the advancements are just unbelievable. It's just so smooth, it's so soft. Like, I don't. I have, I have, that's my second pair of shoes. No. Yeah, second, that's made from recycled plastic water bottles. And the, those black leggings I wore yesterday to Blue Mountain, those were made from recycled plastic water bottles. What? Yeah. And I've had them for like eight really? years. They don't stretch out because they're plastic. It's like, and what's great about when you have a shoe that's made of the recycled plastic, okay. actually I have three pairs now. They just wipe clean because they're plastic. They're just like indestructible. Yeah. Like you're invisible. Yeah, and they're like, this they're stretchy so too. I know. I'm sorry, but this is like, it's so good. I, I keep, okay, I'm gonna give this to you before I lose, I forgot to speak English. These are so like, stylish though too, like you did such a good job. I can't believe that, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna walk away now. <laughs> 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 
Okay, even for an extra small, this is still, still kind of big. This is a little on me, which is normal. I'm pretty small. <laughs> um, I'm only five foot two and a half. But overall, like I'd say, like for the price, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. Let's put up. <laughs> Like, you know, winter time. It kind of says like a little dress, eh? These boots? Heck yeah. Ooh, I am pleasantly surprised. Anyway, I'm gonna have to let you guys go because I can see my camera is at 3%. I will check in with you guys when it's time to bake my famous vegan lentil shepherd's pie. this stove. I've never seen anything like this before. This is the knob and it magnetizes and stays up there. So to actually turn the stove on, I want you guys to pay attention to this. Okay, so you put it there, like this. put it there, you slide it to the power position. It's now on. If I want to turn on this element, I have to scoot the knob towards the one I want. Oh, that wasn't the right one. This is what I want. And then I start increasing it like this. Isn't that wild? And then this element should start heating up. There we go. So <laughs> this isn't ideally the pan I would be using to do this, but I'm going to heat up some of the ugly sweater mold wine so that we can have that with our lunch slash early dinner. There we have some Beyond Meat burgers, which Dushan loves. Get in there with that ketchup action. Wow. And here we have our grilled veggies, a salad, and the mold wine is on its way. This is a massive lunch. I don't know if I'm gonna have room for the shepherd's pie later if we eat all this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give you one of these. I I can barely fit one in my stomach. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in focus here, but I am officially stuffed. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a little awkward. And I'm 
I'm sure a little silly looking, but I'm not sure how else to do it given that there were no pans with pouring spouts. So I'm gonna try to use this soup ladle to get the mulled wine into a glass without spilling it. Warm. And I'll give it a little little taste test. Ooh, gosh, I forgot that compartment comes out. And by the way, guys, I mean, you can absolutely make your own mold wine, and I highly encourage you to do that. I was searching high and low for a kit to like help me with making it because um, I've never done it before, and I came across just like pre-made mold wine. So I got a few bottles of that. Um, this is called the Ugly Mold Wine, and uh, I've just added a little bit of my own seasoning to it. I used um, a cinnamon-based mix that's got. Let me see here. Cinnamon, allspice, ginger, nutmeg, cardamom, and clove. So just to enhance the like Christmassy, cozy vibes. I added a little bit of that to the pan. And now, woo! I love it. I'm instantly transported back to the Distillery District Christmas Market, which they've um, pretty much not been able to do this year, unfortunately but they always have mulled wine at the Christmas market. So I knew I was going to get it one way or another. I'm never gonna get tired of the lighting in here. It's just so ethereal. And I don't think the camera really does it justice. You know, the place is like a complete mess now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy my mulled wine. I'm gonna close the gate because I can. I just realized I haven't filled you guys in on what we did yesterday. So, <laughs> we'll do a little voiceover montage for you. We drove about an hour and a half over to Blue Mountain, which um, I think like most people in Ontario are familiar with and I think most Canadians are because it's kind of like a destination for skiing and snowboarding, but they also had a Scandinavian style spa. Of course, like a lot of the services were closed down, so the massage and whatnot, like that was a no-go, but we were able to partake in their cold and heated thermal pools. And basically the concept is that you go from hot to cold water and then rest and it like kickstarts your lymphatic system. And it was, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little intimidated at the thought of going into icy cold water, especially cause you know, this is all outdoors and we're in Canada and it has recently been snowing. It's, it's very cold here, but we thoroughly enjoy, enjoyed ourselves. Um, if you had told me that Natalie, you'll be sitting in a wet swimsuit wearing only a towel on a mountain in the snow and you're going to love it. I would have told you that you're crazy. But we actually had a very good time. And um, yeah, we also got to walk around the, what were those shops called, Dushan? The shops at Blue Mountain? Sorry? The shops at Blue Mountain? What is that called? Blue Mountain. We also went by Blue Mountain Village, did a little walk around there. It was very picturesque and like cute. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do um, anything on the actual mountain because there wasn't enough snow to do that. But all in all, it was a really nice day and um, some of us were quite tired by the end of it. Guys, I do not want to leave this space. Like, how do you get better than this? You don't. Look at these little, little squirrels foraging around. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I love this space. Man, I don't want to go. Do you like it? It's all right? Okay. A little taste of Christmas. 
Well, that's a good idea. Good morning, everyone. Um, it is our final morning in the converted church. We're just scurrying around, getting everything cleaned up and sorted out since it is a rental property. Obviously, we wanna make sure everything's nice and clean um, before we go, but I just wanted to quickly pop on here before I pack things up and show you the skincare that I have been using and loving. Um, so, First thing uh, in the morning after you know I've showered and exfoliated because I do like using a physical exfoliator, I will combine the Isle of Paradise self tanning drops with either a few drops of the Marula Magic or Youth Boost Serum from Wild Mint. Wild Mint sent me um, a little package of their skincare to try out and I really like how um, either of these combine with my tanning drops. So I'll just, you know, massage that into my face. <laughs> uh, let it dry for a bit so the tanning drops have, you know, time to sink in. And then I'll apply a few dabs of the uh, Biosans Squalene and Probiotic Gel Moisturizer. You guys would have seen me um, using this when we took a trip to Niagara on the Lake. I do like this one a lot because um, I'm acne prone and my skin is combination. So this one has been working out very well for me and you don't need to use a lot, like just, you know, like two fingertips um, worth of uh, moisturizer. And um, I've really been liking how those work together. And of course, um, my coffee, my, my coffee bean, caffeine eye cream from 100% Pure. And then in the evening, I've been using the Mara Algae <laughs> retinol face oil with evening primrose and green tea. You guys saw me unbox this um, a few videos ago and I love this oil in the evening. Um, I need to apply about, you know, six to eight drops to really see the effects of it, but I do find that it temporarily um, reduces wrinkles in my forehead as well as acne. So that could be like active acne or it could be um, acne marks. It does a really good job of just, you know, refining the texture of the skin. And I, I think my skin is actually looking really good right now. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased um, with the effects of that retinol. And I'm not even like, I'm only wearing a, like a light application of makeup this morning. So yeah, and even um, Jishan's been complimenting me on my skin. So Pretty happy about that. Because it is winter time, we have been using this guy. I do not know how to pronounce this name. I got this in the um, Bliss Bundle from 100%, um, sorry. I got this in the Bliss Bundle from the Detox Market last winter, I think. And I've been holding on to this to try out. Um, it's essentially pure shea butter and it feels incredible on your skin. If you have dry hands or um, just anywhere else on your body that might be dry, this is excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, I even passed this around to a few other people to try out and everyone seems to really, really like this balm um, for dry skin. And then <laughs> my obsession with the 100% lip caramels continues. Uh, today I'm wearing buttered chew, but I also brought um, rum, nougat, and ganache with me. My eyebrow hairs are all over the place. Ah. So anyway, um, we need to continue getting everything ready. I am wearing my um, girlfriend collective, please pardon the toilet, <laughs> girlfriend um, recycle plastic water bottle leggings, my Frank and Oak sweatshirt and then my thief and bandit stretchy fabric headband we have a few pit stops to make on our way to toronto i want to stop by an antique market here in paisley and then there's a few um like little cities on the water that dushan wants to stop and explore so we're going to be doing that and um also Obviously, I didn't make the uh, lentil shepherd's pie last night, but I will be doing that once we get back to Toronto. So if you're not, I will be sharing that super tasty, super filling comfort vegan food recipe with you guys before the end of this video.
welcome back to our home. It's actually been a few days since we arrived back in Toronto. Um, on the mantle, you'll see this beautiful large mirror that I picked up at a vintage shop out in Paisley for only five bucks, believe it or not. Um, I do want to, I think, refinish the frame, uh, maybe in gold or white. I, I'm not sure, I'm not settled yet. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know it down below. But I figured since I have <laughs> about 15 minutes um, before my next meeting, I would unbox this shipment. This one is actually from Altruist with you guys because I think this should have my new Eco Elf um, winter coat inside. And I really want to show you guys this because obviously Eco Elf um, creates really high performance, uh, vegan, sustainable activewear. But I think their designs are just really cool and somewhat avant-garde, you know? Like I feel like their designs would be right at home with like, you know, New York designers, like uh, Alexander Wang. They're just really cool, very functional. And I've liked everything that I've gotten from the brand so far. <gasps> so excited. <laughs> And I actually misspoke when I was saying earlier, it's been two years since I bought a winter coat. It's actually been about three or four. I went back and I checked. Um, it's been a long time since I actually bought a coat because I've just been, I've been holding off for so long because I know that I wanted something vegan, sustainable and like ethically made, but I also wanted it to be chic and stylish. You know, I don't want just like a big puffy coat that is like totally shapeless because I'm only I'm only five two, so I need some structure or else I end up looking like a 15 year old. So I'm hoping that this will look all right on me and not too oversized. Okay, so we have another um, compostable pack here. Hear my meeting notification going off, so I've got to hurry. Ooh, I'm so excited, you guys! Oh my gosh! So, what is really incredible about this coat slash jacket is that. It's kind of like three designs in one because it has this double layer to it. So let me just unfurl it. Oh my God. I'm amazed it's not more wrinkled. Wow. Okay. So this is made from recycled plastic water bottles. Um, this is obviously a little more like high end. EcoWealth is a B certified corporation. So you're paying the true cost of manufacturing with these products. And let me just undo the outer layer. So it's kind of cool because the outer layer is a bit like a trench coat and the inner layer is like a fitted puffer, if you will. Um, so you can wear them separately or together. So given that it gets pretty cold in Canada, I'm probably gonna be wearing them both together uh, for maximum impact. Oh my gosh. Let's see if it fits. I ordered a small, by the way. Oh! It's not too long. Oh my God. Usually coats are so long on me. Oh my gosh. This fits perfectly in the shoulders. I actually, <laughs> I messaged Ultra. So I was like, can you just check the measurements for me? Cause I was gonna get an extra small, but I think an extra small would have been too tight in the shoulders actually. This, <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing like a stylish duvet. I'm gonna have to go check this in the full length mirror as well since I only have this one here. I think I might add a belt when I actually do wear this just to nip it in a bit at the waist. But this is pretty cool. I like this a lot. It's nice because it still has that element of like looking chic and put together and polished, but it's quite warm. Um, this is quite toasty and it was actually snowing earlier. So I might be able to actually go outside and test this in the elements. 
And then if I take off this outer layer, which is like a, a thin, it's almost like, um, it's like a trench coat material, like a really thin material. It's not that thick at all. So I don't actually know if I would wear this on its own that frequently. So there's pockets here, pockets here, but then you also have pockets here on this inner layer. Get the patch on this layer too. Oh my gosh, you know what? I quite like it just like this. This is nice. You know what? I, I, I really like this. Just even like as a plain coat. Because the other thing I was considering is I was looking at like cheaper um like mass produced options from like some other companies like abercrombie and i don't know like it was like mango or something like that they had these like vegan leather puffers that were beige and i was like you know i would love a beige winter coat those just seem so classy um but i was like oh let me hold out and see if i can find something from a more ethical brand and sure enough here it is oh i love this I'm gonna go check myself in the full length mirror. Right back. So yeah, I think I do prefer a little more nipped in at the waist, but overall I am quite happy with this design. Um, on the inside of the top layer, it says EcoAlf Vision. Stop using natural resources in a careless way. Mission, create the first generation of recycled products with the same quality and design as the best non-recycled. Today you are wearing recycled plastic bottles. I'm actually getting quite hot with this on. <laughs> so I'm going to have to um, take all these layers off. Um, one great thing to note though about coats that are made from recycled plastic water bottles is that they're highly water repellent. Um, so I was actually wearing the other coat that I unboxed with you guys earlier, the noise one, you know, the leopard print one. I've been wearing that the past few days and uh, it's been kind of raining and slushy and no water or wind can penetrate that coat at all. So I'm assuming this will perform in a very similar way. Um, the other thing about when you have a coat that's filled with this like recycled plastic um, like puffer material on the inside, you're able to get a thinner silhouette while still being extremely warm. Um, I'm already I'm already getting very hot right now <laughs> as I'm, I'm just uh, demoing this. So I think this will actually perform quite well. Again, my only feedback is I just wish it was a little more nipped in at the waist, um, especially because I'm so small. I kind of need that, you know, definition to look like an adult. <laughs> but um, other than that, I love it. And I think I could easily just add my own waist cincher here around the waist if I if I needed to. I truly don't, you know, especially if I'm just, you know, going out in the city or something like that. Um, just be throwing it on um, for when I'm, you know, walking from the car to whatever, like the restaurant when things actually open up. Um, so I think this will be just fine. The other really nice thing about this design is you could just wear it open like this. I'm, I'm still very toasty right now. <laughs> but it's a very, very elegant layering piece while still being super practical. I'm still on the lookout for more elegant vegan winter coats. So if you guys have any other suggestions of brands that I should check out, please let me know down below. I would love, love, love to test drive um, other brands, but I will say I'm, I'm quite impressed with this piece. I feel like I will get a lot of questions about it when I am actually able to wear it out.
welcome back to my kitchen. As promised, I'm going to be walking you through another one of my absolute favorite recipes from the Buddha chef. This is the lentil shepherd's pie. I do make a few modifications. I'll walk you guys through what those changes are. Um, since this was a work day for me, <laughs> I have um, already peeled a bunch of potatoes as well as two sweet potatoes, boiled them, mashed them, and added three fourths cup of almond milk, though the recipe calls for soy cream. I added one third cup nutritional yeast, two tablespoons olive oil, one and a half teaspoon salt, and one teaspoon onion powder. So that is just sitting over here, and that will be basically the top layer of the um, shepherd's pie. The reason I like adding a little sweet potato is flavor, first of all, but also sweet potato has a higher nutritional content than a standard potato, so I like to utilize those whenever I can, and it just, it just adds something to, special to the recipe. So if you're making your own variation of it, I highly recommend swapping out one of the potatoes for a sweet potato and, and see if you like it. Now the next step will be the kind of like savory lentil filling. This part is so good. The smells coming from all the um, stuff that I've prepped is, is really nice. I have uh, my oil heated up in a pan here. I don't like using Teflon pans, but my ceramic one is so scratched up I can't use it right now. I'm looking to replace it as soon as I can. Um, but inside this pan, I will be adding carrots, onion, garlic, green lentils, a little bit of water, soy sauce, maple syrup, tomato paste, um, let me see here. And then as far as seasoning goes, obviously salt and pepper, um, and I'm adding my own combination of seasonings instead of what the recipe calls for. So instead of using basil and oregano and bay leaves, I will be using celery salt, thyme, parsley, garlic powder, and oregano plus salt and pepper. So I'm going to be putting all of that in a pan, letting it simmer, and once those you know, savory scents start wafting up from the pan, um, I'm going to combine these in two different layers um, inside a ceramic dish, and I will pop it in the oven. So I, I do need to preheat the oven for 350, perfect. And um, once I have everything in the pan, I'm gonna let it cook in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, so to this large pan, I'll be adding my onions, my carrots, This is the one benefit of working from home. Well, there's many benefits of working from home, but my favorite is during my afternoon meetings, if I'm not presenting or if I don't need to actively talk, um, I can do some food prep so that once my work day is completed, I can just, you know, start throwing stuff in the pan and getting it ready, which I think is a nice little ritual if you have trouble turning your mind off from work, especially if you, are the type who uh, works from home year round like I do. It's good to have some, you know, not just traditions, but mm, habits in place to transition you from work mode to home mode. And uh, my coworker actually suggested this to me. He said he starts making dinner as soon as like his last meetings are finished. And I, I think that's a really good idea. Of course, I, I do keep my laptop here since people do tend to ping me until about 8 p.m. What I signed up for, so I can't complain. <laughs> so I'm just gonna let this cook. I'm gonna raise the heat from very low to about like mm, low medium. I'm gonna let this simmer for 10 minutes. I'm basically looking for the carrot to get nice and soft and for the onion to get a little transparent. It already smells really nice, even though it's two ingredients. Mmm, <laughs> okay. Onions and carrots have been simmering in the olive oil now for about 10 minutes. I'm going to go through and add the other ingredients to this pan, so that will include the garlic. I like garlic a lot, so I might add just a little bit more than the recipe calls for it. <laughs> Need about one tablespoon of tomato paste. And then, to seal my pans, instead of using saran wrap, I have these funny little stretchy 
silicone reusable like caps that you can use. So I just take one of those and I stretch it across the lid like so. So that way it's like nice and sealed and I can uh, use it for another recipe. Pop it in the fridge. Um, I'm gonna add one tin of organic lentils. Oops, that doesn't go in there. I'm sure a lot of you out there will like soak your own beans and soak your own lentils. I've definitely tried that and it works just fine, but it's just the pre-planning that goes into soaking that turns me off of it. You know, like you've got to soak it at least a day in advance. And I'm already busy as it is. Um, the fact that I'm even cooking at home, I'm <laughs> making my own food instead of saying, relying on, um, you know, restaurants or, you know, Uber Eats to make everything for me. I do try to make the majority of my food at home. So I'm all about the canned good life. I, I don't have the luxury of time to be soaking things. If you make it work, that's good for you. But I, <laughs> I have not been able to make that work with my schedule. Okay, so we have the garlic tomato paste lentils. That's a little bit of water. So just pour some of that in. Three tablespoons of soy sauce. As with everything else that you've seen me make today, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Two tablespoons maple syrup. Ooh, fresh bottle. We're gonna add all the seasoning now, which is exciting. Now for this, I will actually measure because I don't wanna mess up my taste ratios. A tablespoon, not a teaspoon. Tablespoon, so we've got our garlic powder. One tablespoon of that. One tablespoon of oregano. tablespoon thyme and again these weren't actually included in the recipe from the book these are just personally how I like to uh, season this dish one tablespoon of parsley dry parsley by the way <laughs> And then one tablespoon of celery salt. I know most people don't have celery stock. I bought it for some random recipe a while ago and I've just been adding it in here and there with savory dishes um, because it truly does have that salty taste to it. If I use this, I will omit or greatly reduce how much salt I add to the recipe. Since if I combine both salt and celery salt, it'll get too salty. <laughs> So the recipe calls for salt and pepper. I'm just gonna add just like a smidge of salt, again, because of the celery salt, and then black pepper. Oh yeah, this just smells amazing. Stir that up. And I'm gonna let this uh, simmer for about five minutes once it's combined to get all of those wonderful aromatic flavors out. I'm literally salivating right now. <laughs> this smells like chili, like really savory wintertime chili. So nice. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
If you could smell the smells that I'm smelling right now, when YouTube invents smell o vision telling you guys, just that a little bit. So, before I spread uh, my layers of shepherd's pie out, I'm going to be putting a generous amount of olive oil into my ceramic baking dish. Don't skimp on the olive oil, because it will, oh, it just brings all these flavors out from everything. It's just too good. Spread that around so that things don't stick in the corners. And I'm gonna begin by spooning my lentil layer in first. One layer down, one more to go. Now I can already tell that I should have used just a few more potatoes, but they were so small that I was kind of thrown off by how many to use. Normally I use like larger potatoes. So my potato puree on top is gonna to be a little thinner than it usually is, but I'm sure it'll still taste amazing, so I'm not worried. Now, if you want it to be extra fancy, you could top this with um, shredded vegan cheese. You could put another sprinkling layer of seasonings that you like, breadcrumbs. You could top this with nutritional yeast. I, I'm sure you get very creative with this. I'm gonna keep it basic because I am very hungry. <laughs> I'm gonna pop this bad boy in the oven. <sighs> Okie dokie. And now we wait. I'm gonna set the timer for, let's do 45 minutes, because I think I had more liquid in there than I usually do. Mm -mm -mm. Can't, wait. Can't wait, so excited. And I'm so excited for you guys to try this recipe. If you do find yourself um, craving some plant-based, savory vegan food that's great for those like cold winter days, definitely check out The Buddhist Chef. And if you do end up cooking anything from this, please let me know. <laughs> I would love to know if you guys actually um, enjoy hearing about the typical meals that I make as a vegan. Um, I know it's not the typical territory that I go into in this channel, but if you like hearing about that sort of topic, just let me know down below and I'd be happy to make more videos about the um, you know, typical meals I make and things I cook and that, that sort of stuff. Look at this bubbling goodness. So this is piping hot. I'm gonna have to let it uh, cool down. But this will be so delicious. And you know what's great about this recipe? It keeps so well. If I put this in the fridge, we'll be able to eat it like, you know, several days later and it will taste even better than uh, <laughs> tonight. I can't wait for this to cool down so I can dig in with a nice piping slice of uh, shepherd's pie. Oh, I'm like especially excited because I really didn't have time to make any food today. So definitely savor every bite of this. And on that note, I think I'm going to wrap up Vegan Vlogmas episode five. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care guys, bye.